Our students, Brian Proctor back again with another lesson. Class is about to start. So I'm going to keep this intro short because I explained a lot of it in during the class. But what's going on is I am showing you guys how to draw clothes because someone asked me how to show them how to do uh, cl um, clothes. With the, with it's not going to be a short intro. Somebody asked me how to draw clothes, tight clothes on a character. So I figured the guy has a muscular character and wants to do clothes on it. So before you can learn to do that, you have to draw clothes and to know about fabric. So the next video is going to be about me showing you guys, teaching you guys a little bit about fabric and how fabric folds and, and bunches on to uh, the body. I told you it's not going to be a short intro. I don't know why I can't do short intros. But yeah, that's going to be the next video. But this video is basically the first steps to drawing clothes. What you see or what you need to see or what you see <laughs> when doing clothes. Uh, you know what? I'm going to take a nap. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going to cut this. I'm too tired to even cut it. So anyway, yeah, well, let's go on to drawing clothes. This is the first step to drawing clothes. And um, yeah, let's just go. Go do the lesson. All right. So I want to try to go through this quickly. And I don't know what I said during the intro, but a little detail on what I'm doing. I'm going to do uh, clothes. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me for things like clothes, cars, um, creatures, but it's really hard to do something like that because as I, I wrote to one guy who asked me to do some creatures, I said, that's like asking me to do a car. So I'll show you how to do a Ford Mustang, but you might have wanted a Lamborghini and the other guy might have wanted a Cadillac and the other guy might have wanted a Ferrari. So it's hard to just say, hey, draw a uh, car, show me how to draw a car, or show me how to draw a, um, a fish or a flower, because there's so many different ones. So what I'm going to try to do is just go through a bunch of clothes, and this is going to be just a basic outline of the clothes, and in the next video I'm going to show you how to put the clothes on the figure, because someone asked me how to do clothes, tight clothes on a character. So as I say right now, I'm just going to give you the basic outline of it. So when you start drawing or when you practice drawing, you'll know what to do, basically. So first thing I want to do is we're going to go for a t-shirt. So this is good for you people that want to do, draw t-shirts or do t-shirts. There's not t-shirt design. So t-shirt is just a rectangle like that. There's coming off the side is another, basically a square going down like that. Another square going down like that. And in the middle is a U like that. And you do me doing detail, you can just do a little dip right here. And then you have your basic t-shirt. Now you have your stitching that comes around like that. So that's your basic t-shirt. Now uh, you can draw your little design or whatever in there. Um, well, <clears throat> getting into comics, like let's just say this guy's shirt got ripped up. Uh, it's got torn. So this is where the, the tear part is. And then this is where the other tear part is so like it got cut or something or maybe this part of the fabric was torn down and this is for like comics when you're drawing you, your characters with uh, like torn clothes like that so you just basically you have this part or whatever part like if you do a line here just do like little ridges there and then you have the open top part there so if the inside of the t-shirt was red or the shirt or whatever this part would be red too so that's the part that's been ripped or torn down. And then the way they have clothes nowadays, they have the clothes all torn up. And then they have the little threads going through the clothes. But using comics to, to resemble something torn, you're going to have this little flap, just torn piece that just comes down like that. And of course, the inside of the shirt is going to be red too, but I just did that to show you. So t-shirts, and that was just a little bonus for the, to, to tear it. And the same way with the back of the shirt is your rectangle square that goes down. Now there's a difference between um, t-shirts and dress shirts and then you have your, your little piece here like that. Same thing and then we'll get into wrinkles and stuff later. So now a dress shirt is a little different. Let's just say it's still basically the rectangle but it's going to come out more at the top. Now, a lot of times you're probably not going to draw just your shirt sitting on the bed folded, so you don't really need to, to have to draw this little piece, but it's just good to know when you do it. So, and let's just say long sleeve, 
for the dress shirt. Now, the, uh, the opening is what gets you. So you want to go like this. You want to do kind of an almost a heart, more of an upside down teardrop, I guess. Just turn it upside down like that. <clears throat> I'm going to start losing my voice in a minute. And at the tip of this, now this might be a little low, this whole thing might be a little low, but that's okay. Just showing you how to do it. Tip of that, you're going to do this upside down diamond. Diamond. Come on, get up, get your shape, brother. Go back to school. It's a triangle, and you want to curve it around like that. And as I said, this whole this whole piece is a little low, but that's okay. Curve it around like that. And then on the inside, it's going to come like that. And then it actually folds over here and you all know shirts and it comes down and then you have you have your two sides and you have your buttons there but this is kind of like the main part that i'm trying to show you guys let's see if this pen will work not the way i want it to work And of course, you're going to have your that double line here, and then on the inside, you're going to have that line there. And as I say, it's it's one covers the other, one flaps over the other, but you know that because you wear shirts all the time. And then you have your buttons down that way. And then you want to, one thing you want to do is you want to curve, I like the t-shirt, you want to bring that down for the shoulders. And a lot of times they'll have that extra stitch right here which you won't see. And then of course the shoulders, the shoulders, the arms. And if you choose, you can have the button or you can have the collar on the button, the collar on the button. What was that? Okay. Forget this middle line here. I just, my brain just died. You have the folded collar and the button. It is the folded collar, the folded sleeve thingy on in the button going down. You can have your pocket too. And you know, sometimes they're stitched. They're always stitched, Brian. What are you talking about? So yeah, that's 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 your shirt. Now, if you do that with a tie, let's focus on this collar. Using a pencil. Remember your 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 um your upside down teardrop. And you would curve that because your tie is gonna fit up under there so that can be another dime another come on get it right now another triangle upside down curve that like that and then you have your tie material that comes down so this is going to go over and over it's going to come under that diamond and then it's going to be rounded up because the way you fold your tie is going to go up up under this material here and then you tie. So this is, this is, and sometimes they have your buttons here. So that's going to go up like that. Same thing. And then as I say, sometimes if you expensive shirts, they have the little buttons to hold the, your collar from your tie and then the suit, the suit, your shoulders. And then of course you put your head up in here somewhere, but basically that this should be way up on your neck up here. And your tie should be there. Okay, next, let us do jeans or some pants. First, before we go to jeans, let me show you what the back of this would look like. Let's just use the back of this paper. It's going to be the same thing. Down. It's going to, as I say, it's going to go out and it's going to go up. So your collar is going to sit on top of that. Your collar is going to be basically that little can like that. Can, to a can, a uh, rectangle with a little curve to it like that. And then it comes down into your arms. And then you have that sewn piece again a lot of times. But you won't really see that. You don't, you don't really, really see that because it's just sewn piece that yeah you don't show that unless you're doing a close-up and if you're doing men's fashion or something like that so jeans 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 pants really basically do your home plate or the upside down house and this is going to be some really short
pants. That's okay. Line here, line there. And that's almost like making the letter A. Almost like that, except you're bringing this all the way up and down. Very simple. Like that. You got you some pants. Now, the thing about pants is, the thing about pants are, you want to take this out. And as I said, I'm going to get into wrinkles later, but this is just going to give you the basic guideline to doing pants. You know that the, the um, you have your button in the middle, or it's like not middle, but slide it over to the side a little bit. And then coming over, you're going to have this hook like that. And then it goes back up. Your button is here. Your wrinkles are going to be down here. You're going to have a little bit of space between this and where your crotch actually is. And then you have your wrinkles, and I'll get into wrinkles later. Uh, you have your button. You're going to have your stitching that goes all the way across. Your first two loops right here. And then your pocket is going to be right at the end of the loops and it's going to curve down like that. And then your, your belt loop, belt, belt hook, belt loops, and then you're going to have your next ones there. So now the difference between jeans, let me finish the jeans first. So I will, I will do this. A little hook all the way down. And then you have your stitching here. Your first two belt loops, I guess that's belt loops. And then your pockets are going to curve down like that. And a lot of times you have like a, a little button here or here somewhere for your jeans. Uh, just, to, I guess, to hold the pocket, to keep the pocket from tearing. And you're putting your hands in it so much. Or putting, yeah, putting your hands in and out of your pocket so much. And it's going to come down. Remember the letter A. Bring that up a little bit. And then come down. Now the difference between like slacks and jeans are basically you won't have, well, it's fabric. And that's another thing about clothes. And I'll get into that in the next video when I put the clothes on the figure. It's the fabric, different type of fabric. The difference between jeans and slacks are you're going to have that, that crease line. So whenever you're drawing your character in clothes, and hopefully if you're drawing a character you won't keep him in his, his suit, his, his outfit, costume, whatever you choose to call it, all day. I mean, like, Batman can't stay in a bat suit forever. He does have to go to dinner. He has to go to bed. So you have to put some type of clothes on your character other than his costume, uniform, whatever you choose to call it. So eventually you're going to have to learn how to draw this. And the thing is, slacks are a thinner material. So... You would try not to have as many wrinkles as you would in jeans. I know jeans are thicker, but slacks are supposed to be ironed and neat. So you can't have a bunch of, you know, wrinkles all, all through it unless the guy just, you know, fell out of a plane or something. But that would be the difference between uh, jeans and slacks is basically this. And you don't put so much emphasis on all of this. So let me just, just because, just because... Just because. And then you have pleated jeans as well. So you won't, you really won't see this as strongly as you will in your jeans. You'll see this. It'll come down here. And I mean, if, unless you look real close, you'll see that. But you just have that. As I say, you have your, your uh, crease. And of course, you have your, your um, belt loops all the way up. You have your buttons. And then this, this, this sewn line here is not as prevalent as in the jeans as well. So you want to have less lines in your um, slacks. And then quote, you want to have kind of like a triangle point right here versus your jeans are going to be just like round and kind of like baggy when you uh, put them on. And as I say, I'll get into wrinkles later. So you have this, then you have that. And remember you have that little Point there, point there, and then you have your belt, I think it's belt loop. Yeah, and not so, not so, not so, what, not so many wrinkles. 
And then I the believe the pleated ones have like the little things here. But again, unless you're really drawing fashion, you don't really need all those extra, extra, extra lines, especially in a suit, in a suit pants, suit pants. Speaking of suit, let's do a suit jacket on top of a shirt. All right. I just looked in the camera and I see my nail clipper all in the way, ruler all in the way. All right, let's do the jacket. So again, let's do this. Let's go square. Let's try to make this a little bigger. Rectangle. Let's do my center line. You want to do the coat? You want to do the shirt? Let's do the coat first. So the coat, you're going to have that. It's going to come down probably almost halfway that uh, curved um, upside down triangle thank you brian you got it which is you know it's going to go around same way as the shirt does now you're going to have this part that comes down and then there comes down and there so basically i said if you do a triangle and then you take the triangle down like that and do another triangle be easiest way I can easy way I can say so way up top here you're going to have a line that comes down like this and then comes down same thing other side line that comes down like that and then you're going to have a piece that comes up and around up and around like that and that's that's your your suit I mean this might be lower but you're going to have that and of course one side is going to cross over and come down like that. The one thing about a suit is, as I say, you want to, you, the shoulders are going to come down like that. And the one thing about a suit is it definitely is not like a t-shirt, which is straight like this, and then the arms come out. The suit comes down and definitely comes in like that. So this is going to come down and then in because the suit is cut to, tailor cut to give you that shape and then there are shoulder pads in suits to, as I say, give you that shape and to hold that, 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 um, to hold, to, you have to have room when you're wearing like shirts and stuff under this. So it gives you that extra room for your shoulders and it gives you that shoulder pad to make your shoulders look more broader, to make you look better. And it comes in and then sometimes it goes back out or you can have it straight down, whichever you choose. And then you have your, um, sleeve now if you get close up this is sewn here and this is sewn and it's always bunched in it's kind of like they put it together and they put it together and then it's kind of like this on the sleeve it's bunched in like that on the sleeve so it's gonna have this little lump and then it comes down like that and then you have your buttons or if you if you want to do the uh, I forgot what it's called it comes out a little further and then you have two sided buttons I forgot what that's called I think it's double breasted double breasted suit somebody will leave it in the comments like that so yeah it's 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 and then of course it's cut open here most suits I mean you can have square I think tuxedos might be straight cut but that's that depends on on you know you and again you want to have as less wrinkles less wrinkles little wrinkles as possible so let's just do this i'm not gonna go around because i'm gonna put a shirt in there remember it's gonna come down and then out in So if you have a character that has a suit on, you, you really want to have, you want to really put a nice suit on the guy. And as I said, there's so many different clothes that I'm just giving you the general basic. And then as I do, and it's probably going to be a couple days for me to make this because I want to do, you know, a lot of clothes, but I don't want a lot, a, 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 a long video. So basically that's your suit. And if you want to do like a pocket on the side, you can do the pockets 
and then the little the little um, top pocket where you put your your handkerchief in if you choose to. So now a suit, uh, a suit. Um, let's put a head up on this cat right here, right quick. There's your neck like that. So if he had uh, a shirt and tie, it would come down. It's going to be high high on his neck. Speak the truth, Brian. It's going to be high on the guy's neck, and then we're going to have that V again, the diamond. Jesus, what is it with you and diamonds? I'm going to write it. Uh, triangle. Triangle here, and you can bring it closer. You can bring it closer in that little triangle. Am I saying it right now? Yeah, triangle. It can go out or it can be close in. Let's bring it a little closer just because. Just because. And then you have that triangle again upside down, make it curved right here, and then your tie comes down. Cat looking like James Bond up in here. So, and then if you choose, you can have the little tie, tie clip, tie clip to hold the tie together. So this is gonna come from around the back of the neck, so you wanna curve that. And remember, the body is curved, so you're not gonna have really straight lines. You shouldn't have any straight lines, really. It's gonna curve a little bit, and things like that, these little curves, and it just it makes your art jump out because people notice that stuff. That wow, he's curved that around the neck. Now, even if they don't see it, they'll they'll notice it from other people's uh, art that's basically straight. So this suit will come up around there more like that, and then you have remember the, the half diamond, half that. There we go with that diamond, the triangle, and then your suit. Tie clip. You don't have to have the little tie clip. And then like that. So now you got your good looking character ready to go gambling or on his date or wherever you gotta go and nice cheekbones and you know rugged, rugged kind of guys. Put some nice cool little shades on him. Look like he blind. Let me give him like a little player mustache and a little, yeah, there you go. A little bit of little hair up in there. Yeah, so that's how you do a suit. And me and my comic geekness comes out. It curves around. And then again with that little thing. And you have your handkerchief. Player looking good. And then your button. I think the button's on the out inside. I'm not sure. But a lot of times if you have the suit and the shirt, you will see just a little bit of the, the, the um, shirt sleeve. Because usually your shirt tends to be shorter, longer than your suit jacket. So if you had like a black shirt on, it would be like this, leaving some shadow. And I have no need to be coloring this. I don't know why I'm coloring it. Leaving some shadow, leaving some light room so that you know where this ends and that begins. If you understood what I just said, yeah, be cool like that. Stripe tie. Now, actually, that should have been going the opposite way. But, yeah, you get the drift. All right, let's step back a little bit and do the almighty hoodie. Now, your guy might not want to wear a suit that day, but everybody owns a hoodie. Everybody owns a hoodie. I don't know anybody that doesn't have a hoodie. So, same thing with the suit or same thing with your shirt, coat, whatever. It's getting late and I'm hungry and I'm tired. Oh, that would be hangry. Hungry and angry. So again, your 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 hoodie, your yeah, you know, I'm tired. This part is gonna be actually more down on a hoodie. So if you do the person here, and do his neck, do some shoulders, and I'm gonna do more of dressing the character. In the next video, because this video will be stupid long if I did that. So here's his shoulders. So that hoodie is going to be right here. That that cross piece where you sew the arms on is going to be way down here. Where it's a t-shirt is up here, and then here's your sleeve. So just remember that hoodie. Um, and I, there's a there's a there's a there's a word for this. I don't know what it's called. I'm just arm connecting sewn piece. Is down here so if his arms are here that's gonna be way down here and then the rest is here 
So you're gonna get a lot of wrinkles in your hoodie. So we'll, we'll get to that later, but this is the easy part. The hood part is the hard part. Now regardless if you have a zipper hood or just a slide on hood, the pieces are gonna come up and let's deal with the inside first. Depending on the size of your hood, you're gonna have that. And that's that's this again, that's that that um that teardrop upside down teardrop. Make check it, make sure I don't go off. You can see this. Except it's gonna go more like that. Almost like a word balloon. And as I say, it depends on the size of the hoodie. Then you you'll see this is the, you'll see the inside of it. You can have it as high or low as you want to. So this would be your inside. Because the hoodie has it was going to have a lot of, of folds. So you have that. You're going to have the inside here, so you're going to have more folds. Let's get his neck. This is his neck. So you can have folds, and it's going to actually come down to this part here, and you can have more folds under there. So remember, this is like the outer part. This is just the outer part. Then you want to have the actual hood itself. So all well, this is kind of like the inner, 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 your inner sanctum. It's going to come down and ride your shoulder. And it'll be behind you. So basically, I kind of lost that one. All this is going to be your inner piece here, your inner, inner part of your hood. And then you have that one little outer piece because how can I explain that? It's curved, the, the actual curved, meaty part of the hood. You have no idea what I'm saying because I have no idea what I'm saying because I can't explain it at, at right now. Anyway, let's continue to go. And then somewhere here, you're going to have your strings. Remembering this is going to come all the way down here into your shoulder. And then the rest of the hoodie. And then the hoodie's gonna be wrinkled like crazy, but just for the sake of, of not throwing a bunch of wrinkles up. And then you have your pocket, it curves in like that, and then you can have the sewn piece. And if it is zipped, you will have your little zipper piece. It goes all the way down, like so. The sleeve is a little short. So if I did the hoodie on top of the person, and then, because of shadow, you can get away with like just blacking a lot of that in. And that all depends on the time of day, <clears throat> the time of day. But usually if you're drawing your character and he has a hoodie on, you're going to be doing a close up of his face. So you want to get the inside looking halfway right. You just don't want to, you know, make the thing just slacking, slacking. Right, guy? Yeah, Brian, you don't want it to be slacking. Why am I drawing a face? I don't know. So if I put a hoodie on someone, let's just say, here's his head, here's his neck, here is the part here. All right, again, have this down. Now you're going to have it depends on if the hoodie's open or not, or I mean closed or not. You're going to have a piece. What, what I do is the highest piece is going to be on the back of his head. I'm going to I'm going to raise that over his head, and then I'm going to come down like this, kind of a, a mountain, like that, and then in. It depends on depends on how big the hood is, and you'll see some of the inside, and you'll see some of the outside. It depends on how the person is wearing the hood. Remembering that there is a center line where they connect it. Now, if I draw a face like that, and let's say like the eye here, eye there. How is the person going to wear the hood? Is it going to be covering his eye? Is it going to be just like real low on his uh, um, face? So, and then you, if the as I said, depends on how tight the hood is, determines how much material you're going to have, like, hanging over. So, 
and be like this. And then some material here, because this is all material. And you know, it, 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 as I say, it just depends on how you want to have that person wearing that hoodie. And then material here. And keep it high up on his head and then it's going to, because of the material, it's going to be thin. So it's going to go over the hood, probably maybe suck in. And see, all that depends on, on you, how you choose it. How did I do this? Did I have this coming out? Did I bring it in? I think I had it coming out. And then the material here. And then the face there. And then your opening usually on the hoodie is pretty much low, like down to your neck. And then your material, as I said, your material here, you're going to have to have some wrinkles somewhere. And then wherever the shoulder is going to be at. So if I ink this strangely, and as I said, the material up in there. this here and of course material in here as well and then you're going to have that line that separates it and then you come down here again and the hoodie is basically it is sewn on to this part here so you're going to you're going to have that sewn piece somewhere usually if the hood is on your head, then you'll see that sewn piece. You don't have to draw it, but just for the sake of knowing, it's there. And it goes down, and of course, again, you have your strings. And this depends on if it's, zip, is it, if it's a zip hood or not. Your string there. And then, of course, a lot of this would be in shadow. There's my other pen. Let's just say this was his head. neck give him that mysterious kind of look and of course this would be in shadow as well because the chin but it's not a shadow thing it's about um, the hoodie. And as I said, it's going to be down on the shoulder and then it's going to curve in. And then your, um, sleeves. And so the hoodie just, and I'll get into wrinkles because that's a whole new video and I'm trying to keep this video short, which it's not. Yeah. So let me pause this right here and then see what else I'm going to do. It probably from the side, show you the hoodie from the side, and then um, jump into some shoes. So for right now, it's late. I am going to get something to eat, and I'm going to restart this tomorrow. And hopefully editing some of the stuff out will make it a little shorter. So see you tomorrow. And good morning. It is a new day. I got a little sleep last night, and uh, hopefully today I can distinguish a diamond from a triangle, so we'll see. So, forgive my voice if it starts, if I start to choke up, I don't know, maybe I need something warm to drink, but um, continuing on, let's, let's get your glasses first. I can see far away, but it's getting to the point where it's close up, I can't really see it too good. Old age is not your best friend. All right, so let's do this. Let's say I put a belt on this guy. A lot of times people put straight belts like that. Remember that the body is round. All parts of the body is round or it's going to be a circle. So if I put a belt on here, the belt wouldn't be straight like that. You would have to have some kind of curve 
to that. So you just have to remember that because if you take a poll and you put it in perspective and let's say you were standing here in the middle looking at this thing, you're like this up here somewhere looking at this thing. The top would not be flat, it would be more round, and the bottom would be round like that. So the only part is going to be straight is in the middle. So in some essence, if that's right, you could do a belt, wouldn't be straight. You'd have to have some kind of curve to it. So what I do is like this, kind of almost like an eye, like that. Not too, not too much because then it looks... It looks kind of bad. You will have a straight line, and then each line would curve up more, just like this, until it met that type of curve down there. That type of curve, until it met that type of curve. What? So, yeah, sometimes it's just best to do a belt, you know, because looking down, see, I'm, this whole thing is looking down, so you'd have this curve looking down as well. But it depends on where you stand. So, this guy, I would I'd probably make the belt a little. little how do you say, uh, narrow, narrow word, that's my hard word to say, like synthesizer, I can only say that word once or twice, kind of like that, to kind of give, give him that round shape, if, if your perspective and your eye line was right here, if your eye line was like up here somewhere looking down, then yes, you do that, if your eye line was up, then you would do the opposite way, so yeah, uh, Feet. Am I moving on to feet right now? All right, let's let's do the side. Let's do your side. Maybe I should use a whole new sheet. Pants. And if you're drawing something that you don't know what it looks like, try to find it. Reference. Just reference stuff. Because, you know, on the internet, there's always a picture of something so let's just say pants from the side now the one thing about pants from the side is you're gonna have that that zone that not that crease what is that that little piece called all you clothes makers you're gonna have that naturally you're gonna have your pocket it comes around and this is more like jeans you're gonna always have that that center piece and then you're gonna have your your pocket which comes around and it hooks to that that little I don't know what that's called. Maybe I need to go back to bed. There, and there's your button here, and then there's your button here. And then, of course, you have the front of your pants. Bring that out a little bit more. And then you have your um, belt loop. Like that. And basically, that's going to be for all pants, except for slacks. So if you, like that, you're going to have the inside crease again. Except for slacks, because it, the, 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 the least amount of um, lines and wrinkles determines the more expensive stuff is. So yeah, let's let's move on to feet. And I have no idea how long this video is going to be. I might end up breaking this into two parts because I'm, the next video is going to be putting the clothes on the figure. So you have to at least know what the clothes look like as you put them on uh, because you need to know, oh, there's, a, there's that center line which is that where they sew them together or I don't know what you call that and then you know that the belt I mean the pocket loops around and it hooks to the um that line so yeah you have to know the pieces of the puzzle so that you can put them together right so feet we did the uh, we did the coat shirt suit coat hoodie all right going down to the feet now the feet are just triangles did, I did. I think I talked about that. No, I did. I just did a one. I did a video. Slow down. I just did a video on doing feet. So basically, if you take a triangle, let's do that again because I was just mad at myself. You split that triangle in half and you move these apart like this. You separate them like that. Then you have the basis for your two feet. Everybody can do that. So. Doing this, if you take that that um, half triangle, good, I almost called it a diamond, and you flattened it off like this. Don't, at the top, drop down a little bit. 
draw a line across. And then from this point, you go down. So you kind of like make that slice of cake. If you had like a piece of cake on a plate, it would look like that. Or as you could call it, the wedge. Yeah, chocolate cake, of course. Me loves the chocolate cake. So you take that, and that's the, that's the basis of your foot. If you're doing shoes, you don't have to worry about the toes because somebody wrote in and said they have a hard time doing toes. And toes are kind of like hands. If I do this, I do my little wedge. And this is the, well, the big toe is going to be right here. So if you just do your toes, do your circles for your toes. One, two, three, four. Knowing that little baby toe is way back there. So you just go up and over, kind of like a steps, up or back and up. This one is going to have more, more uh, bend to it than the other ones. Let me have a smaller pin. And then just curve around. So let's just start with this one, just up and then curve around like that. You have that toe that curves in and then you have that pad of your foot and then you have that arch and then you have your heel. So this one will just curve around, down. Remembering the foot curves around, so you want your toes to kind of go behind each other as you go around, maybe not that far back. But this one's gonna be your, your um, furthest one out and then so forth and so on to go back around. And then you have your instep, if I'm not mistaken what that's called. And you have to get that angle right because a lot of times I'll mess this angle up and it throws the whole foot off. Then your, your heel, your ankle, and then your leg, you know, because if you get this wrong, it kind of looks like a caveman. It's just how you do it. But if you're doing shoes on your feet, you don't have to worry about toes unless you're doing, you know, a woman's thing. And then your toenails can curve up like that and then curve back if you choose to do toenails. If you are trying to do feet, I would suggest you, um, Get as much reference on feet as you can, foot models, um, sandals, women wearing sandals, that type of thing. And that arch, that, could have, that foot could have went back a little bit more. And then when I do feet, I always do this little thing so I know where the, where the bend is. And that's just me, and then I erase this. But so if the big toe is just out, down, and curve around like that. It's almost like a step. And then the second one with, with less, less of that curve, third one. Remember I said going back around, fourth one. And then that little baby toe is always hiding somewhere. And then your toenail, you wanna arch it or curve it like this. Unless you're doing a woman with like cat nails and the nail comes all the way off the, the toe which uh, yeah, I've seen that, it's not a pretty picture. But for me, or you can round it off if the women you know, have a longer toe. Now it looks more like a thumb, like that. But I mean, your feet realistically kind of do look like hands almost. But I always curve it up like this. That gives a toe roundness and then curve it back. However size I want the toenail. Usually I don't draw feet because all my characters have shoes on or boots or whatever, but yeah, you would do it that way. So yeah, and then if you wanna do, you know, the hobbit type foot or man's foot, then you do your little hobbit hair all over your nasty hairy feet, you know, and that a woman's feet, you know, women get mad now. I got no nasty hairy feet. Some of y'all do, you know you do, and then the polish, shine them up on top of that nasty hairy feet. Go shave your feet. Go shave your old hairy feet. So yeah, okay, you know the women's nasty hairy feet. We're gonna do go back to the, the actual foot. So <clears throat> you have your diamond. Your diamond. There we go. Here we go. Getting tired. Go get some breakfast. You have your half triangle. Cut it across just like that. Bring it down like so. Remembering this part is going to go back, it's going to go around. 
So you can angle it. This is the hard thing to do because a lot of times, even professionals, when they draw comic books and they have feet, it looks like they have two left feet because both feet are actually going back that way. All right, so most times I don't do flat. From that angle, I'll take it back a little bit more. And that is, kind of makes it easier for the foot. It makes it easier to draw the foot when you go back like that. You want to round that off because your, your shoe comes here and then you want to ride that, that instep like that and then you come back, you give it a little bit of arch, not too much, a little bit, and then you curve your heel up and down. So that's going to look like this. And then that's the beginning of a shoe or a boot or whatever. And then, of course, you have that, that heel. But before you put that heel on, there is a... I should really find out what they call these things. There's a little piece in between the, the, the shoe and the heel. And then you have your heel. And your heel, realistically, you'll see the top of your heel... So you'll have like a third one, but that's only when you're doing like realistic um, detail, detail boot or close up of a boot. And then that heel is going to come down and then around following that. Now you can, you can have one, one um, whole piece or you could just bring it up and then curve it around and it's going to come off that. It's going to curve around, come off and then down. And around. It depends on what type of boot you have or what kind of shoe you have on. Uh, that determines what type of design you have on your shoe. Yeah, I don't know what what um, what you are aiming to get, but yeah. And then do whatever you want to do to it. Your heel. Your your stitches whatever that's up to you to do that i mean you might end up becoming a shoe designer big money for stuff like that and then of course if it's a serious boot they always have the stitching in it to hold that leather that extra leather if it's like a metal boot or something you might have rivets or something uh, it depends on what you're drawing so yeah and then again as i said in the other video if you want your combat kind of boots you just Take your little pieces out, square. Usually it, it stops in the front and then it continues on the side. So yeah, as I say, it depends on what type of type of boot you want. All depends on the wedge. Now, let me switch papers. So again, half of a triangle like that, cut it off and then bring it down. Now you can angle that as much as you want because if I did a front foot, it would stay like this. And then this is the leg here going into the foot. This is the, this is the curve of the foot here. Maybe some ankle. And then you really won't see too much heel because this is the front of the foot. So if I did another front foot, it would look like that. Round it off. And then that. But now if I started to turn this foot sideways, then I'd add this. But this is the, this is the very front He's standing at attention, and this is the front of this guy's feet. Standing at attention, having his feet together. So if I started to turn, then I would bring it out just a little. Each For each one, I would bring it out just a little bit further until I have a complete side view of that foot. Now, I don't know if I said this in the first part, but when people ask me to do, you know, clothes, teach us how to draw clothes, there are so many different clothes in the world. That's like saying, show me how to do a woman's dress. How many type dresses, you know, do women have? That's something I'm not even going to get into because if you can do the, the female's body, you just put something around it that looks nice to you and then, you know, you're good to go. As far as, you know, a woman's dress, I mean, this could be a woman's dress if this is her figure. 
that's that's a woman's dress right there. It could be short sleeves, uh, you know, long sleeves, whatever. But just you fit it around her form, and then you pretty much have a dress. So I'm not going to get into how to draw, but in the next video, how to draw a woman's dress or how to draw dresses. But in the next video, I'll do the figure, and then I'll put forms around the figure and show you how the wrinkles go, and so forth and so on. So back to the foot. I said I was going to draw. I just drew a shoe, but find, I'm going to save time, and I'm not going to find an image of a shoe and draw that, but just as I said, just find an image of a shoe that you want. Now that you know how to draw the foot, to get the foot started, find an image of the shoe that you want, and then draw that around as best you can. As long as you have the shape curving around here, this is a curve, it comes up, in, and rides that instep, which is that part right there. If I'm not mistaken, the instep, this is your arch, and your heel. You can make the foot a little longer. Just make the triangle longer if you need be to make the foot longer. Curve around and up. And then you will have your, as I said, you'll have your heel. You can have your one, and then you can have your heel after that. It can ride all the way around. A lot of times from the side, if this was the side of your foot, your heel, your arch, your toe, and the way your foot comes, you see the way this comes off the ground. If this was the ground, the toes come and then you go up like that. That's the same way they do the heel. The heel, usually the heel. Yeah, the front of the, the heel is the back. The front of the sole, sole is up off the ground too. So if you're doing the front, it's going to have like, kind of like that. Because when you walk, you walk like this you don't you don't bounce down your foot hits and then it like kind of rolls I don't know if you see that from the side it kind of rolls your foot just doesn't hit so in order to roll you have that piece that goes up like this so and that's when you won't really get into like detail you'll have that little arch and then sometimes you'll see just that little part under the bottom and then again as I say you have that that little, that third, that second line that curves around, and then you have the foot that sits on top of that whole thing. And as I said before, it depends on what type of shoe you get. If you want to do a tennis shoe, I said I wasn't going to get into that. Just find whatever type of shoe you have or shoe you want, and then do that design that you want for a shoe that you want. I, I have no idea what a shoe looks like right now, but I know usually they have that. Some of them have the toe out. Some of them have the, the little piece that goes around with the toe, comes up. You have your little symbol, whatever, whether it be a Nike or whatever. Some, it's, it, it, the sky's the limit when designing shoes. So, yeah, you, you, you do what you have to do to make your shoe. As long as you have the form right, then you're good to go. Heel, arch, curve that around, come up, and in there. And if you're doing socks, you're good with socks. That's your sock. Same thing. A couple stripes on the front. You got socks wrinkled down here. Yeah. Let's do an attempt to do a woman's shoe foot shoe which are always harder because you have to get the curve just right or they look kind of crazy again using the um, triangle wedge wedge method let's try two front feet and as I say you know reference always have reference and these are the woman's feet now use the woman's Feet, most feet, they kind of like you curve out anyway. Nobody's feet go straight down. It kind of realistically they curve out and then in and you have your heel and you have your, your foot. Remember the foot is round. And the ankle, you know, the higher ankle is the inside is the inside is higher than the outside. Ankle. I don't do ankles because, because. So if this is the woman's foot, let's just start out with the basic foot. The cut of the her shoe. Let's say if this is her toe. 
And women wear these shoes, and women's shoes are always tight. So instead of that first toe being out like it should be, it's always pushed over to the side. I feel sorry for you ladies, because you have to wear these shoes that man designed these, a lot of these shoes that, that push your toe over like so. And then, yeah, you always have that little twisted front toe. It's amazing how man designs a lot of women's clothes instead of women. And we have that nowadays, one, two, three, four, five. But it usually was the man that said, oh, the woman should wear this. The woman looks good if they wear this. You know, and you'll force them to do that. So putting the shoe on, you have to, where's the cut at of the shoe? Is it over the toe? Is it below the toe? Some shoes have the cut that's below the toe just a little bit, allowing you to see just some of it. So just curve around and then up. And then this doing a close up of the shoe, you would have to like leave some space, a little bit of space. It doesn't have to be too tight. And then come down and then you have your roundness. And that's that's another thing. It's just your angles. Of your shoe. Again, get reference. Get reference if you can. And then maybe some of the toe here. You might see some of the side of the shoe. It depends on what type of shoe. And the back. Let's see if I can show you this because it's all messed up. And it's the shape. You get that shape right, you're good to go. Mess it up, it's kind of weird looking. It's like this because it's really not it's not round like that it has more shape to it definite shape to it and then you can have your bottom but a lot of women are doing the the, the, the big heel now the high higher heel to make them taller uh, maybe the top of the toe like that and unlike a man's heel that comes out wide or further to give you more balance, women's heels are always in more narrower to give them less balance, to force them to walk the way they walk. But that's just a man thing. A man decided to do that. So again, coming around, you got to get that shape. Somehow, some way. Then go up to the side, maybe. And then, as I say, some of them have the heel that comes in. And then the toe. Like that. Lift your ankle somewhere here, somewhere there, and then your legs. So if I erase the toes. I have a better looking foot. And then of course your bottom of your shoe, of the shoe. That's the front. As I said, again, I can't state enough. Just get, get as much reference as you can sideways. And then we'll finish this. I was thinking I was gonna have to split this into two, but it just might be one real long, real long one part. So this is the side of the foot. As I said, you can cut it off and you can make it not the side, you can make it front, whatever angle, all the way going around. All the way going around. When you talk fast, you lose it. You have this part, which is the bottom, which is going to stay the bottom. You're going to have to lift the heel up. Remembering when you lift the heel, when you lift the arch up, however much you lift the arch up, you have to lift this up as well. And as I said, this is that shape you have to get right. You have to get this part right or it just kind of looks crazy. Again, this is not going to be flat. This is going to come up so that when you walk, you, you're walking right. So if I had to do this, this is going to be like this, come up, this come here, and then you're going to have your heel. And however you cut, if it's going to be pointy or whatever, you cut, is it going to go all the way down to the side and come up, cover the heel, what kind of you're gonna have a wedge heel, whatever type of heel you have. As I said, you, some women they're 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 doing the, the large heels, 
or the large uh, soles. Some are not. Let's just say like that, coming down like that. And you know, if you want the strap on the shoe, I personally like these type of shoes with the straps. That's just me. Everybody has their own. And you can have it higher. You can have you know just the, like the dancer heels, which are like way up high like that. Bring that out, and then your foot. Well, you got to get this part right, or it screws up the whole thing. So the the higher it goes, the less toe you're gonna you're gonna have. The less toe you're gonna be seeing. So it won't go like way up here, and you have all this toe out here. It's gonna be you know less toe, more, more, because you're standing up on your tippy toes, basically tippy toes. So the higher you, you reach up, the less toe you're standing on. As I said, you have to get this, this part right here or just screws up everything. Yeah, so. All right, let's do this one last thing and then we'll cut this video before it gets too long. I was looking up. Okay, you have your front and your side. What about like a three-quarter view? And it takes strange shapes when you when you when you um, when you do three-quarter view, three-quarter view, Brian, of a female foot. Now, you find your center line. That's the first thing you want to do, and then kind of like round that off at that point. The toe is going to be here, or the, the, the edge of the foot is going to be here. The edge of the foot, bottom, that your know, cut of your shoe, your instep, and then your up part, the part that goes up, your up part, the part that goes up. But the best thing to do is find your center line. That way you'll you'll see you'll know where the point of the shoe is going to be at. And you have more, it's going to be, it's going to be, how can I say that? It's going to be off, off center, that point. If this is the top of your shoe, like that, looking down, that point is not going to be centered. It's going to be more off, and then you have more over here. The point is going to be here, like that, so that you don't have... Because the way your feet are, you know, you got your long toe, it's just being pushed over here, and then you have your rest of your toes that goes over here. So that point is going to be off, you're going to have more over here than there. It's going to be kind of like, like that, and then you have your, well, however your cut is on your shoe. But just have that center point, and it's going to be here, curve it around, up, and then your heel. So as long as you have that point and that center of your foot, you're going to be all right. You should be all right. You should be all right, man. And then down, and then you go from there. Curving around that heel. And then down. Get you some reference, please. Get you some reference. And then you'll have it. You should have it. Foot bends here, the arch, and then up. And however heel you want, you have the fat heel, the 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 um, thin heel, the wedge heel, whatever other heels they call the heels. And then curve this up. Keep this a little curved up here. And if you choose to put a a heel on that, then there you go. All right. I think I'm gonna end this video here. I want to kind of mentally think about what I did and if I need to do anything else like a coat or jacket which is pretty much the same as the hoodie would be except you can add like more stuff to a jacket depends on what type of jacket you're doing shoulder pads um, and they could go all the way down the arm if you want to whatever kind of design you can leave this out you can have pockets on the side uh, it could be a little bulkier, a little thinner. Uh, as I say, it depends on what you, what kind, what you're doing. So again, it's hard to draw something that is a lot of something, and someone say, "Draw one of those. Draw me, show me how to draw a car." Now, how many cars are there in the world? 
Oh, show me how to draw a flower. How many flowers are there in the world? So, yeah. As long as you have the basics to draw these things, you should be all right. And the next video, which I'm going to start working on today, is going to be... Did I, did I show you guys this one? Or was this is a rough, rough draft? I think that might have been a rough draft. Where is that one at? There it is, the tears. So, yeah. Ending it right here. Next one is going to be about the clothes. I mean, fitting the clothes. I don't know why they want to tear clothes up nowadays. Fashion just keeps coming around back again. But, yeah. What, what's next? I don't know. All right. Ending it right here. Thanks for sticking with me. And the next one, I have some things to talk about so it's going to be a little, little, little long intro because people ask about like I'm afraid to show my character somebody might steal my character or um, a, a lot of different things and I'll talk about all that before I get into the video so it's information and as I say you know information is 70% or knowledge is 70% and talent is 30% so you need that info all right I'm going to end this before I ramble on some more see you in the next video real soon